Hello, everyone. Today we're here with Eleanor Tara. Eleanor is a life purpose mentor and Vedic astrologer. She started her career in the music business and was a successful record label executive for over a decade, but walked away from everything to follow her true calling, helping people understand their life's path through Vedic astrology readings. Over time, she began mentoring more and more of her clients around following their hearts to find their life purpose, and that's become the main focus of her work. Eleanor draws on her varied background to combine both the spiritual and the practical realm so that her work is firmly grounded in reality and can yield impressive, tangible results. She works with her clients through one-on-one readings, mentoring programs, and online classes. I've known Eleanor for years, and I have a lot of respect for her. She has a huge heart, a ton of knowledge, and a real hunger to truly help people. I've seen her go out of her comfort zone many times, and I know that she's very committed to becoming the best version of herself possible. I've been looking forward to this podcast for a while. So, Eleanor, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So the intention behind A Better Life is to show people that if they have a choice, they can choose a better life. So in that spirit, can you take a minute to just brag and share with us some of the things that you're most proud of in your life? The thing I'm most proud of in my life is the extent to which I turned my life around. I was working in the corporate world for many years and had no idea about anything to do with the world that I'm in now in terms of the world of personal development and spirituality and Vedic astrology and living in the Bay Area and all of that good stuff. And so what I'm most proud of is getting from a point where that seemed most unlikely to a point where that's my whole life. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that time period in your life when you were in LA record industry? Yeah, absolutely. I was finishing up a 10-year career in the music business. I was actually doing really well in terms of my outer world success. I was a vice president at the Warner Music Group and had a large number of people working for me and a great office and everything that one would think that they would want. One day I just walked into that office and I just knew I didn't ever want to go back. (laughs) And I really wasn't sure what else I would do with myself. And so You know, I also didn't have a sense of what else was out there. And then I got a very special invitation to attend a festival called Burning Man. When I went to Burning Man, which is this huge festival out in the Nevada desert that takes place every every year, and I thought it was just a big party. But when I went there, I discovered so many things that spoke directly to my heart that I had no idea even existed. It opened a whole world of possibility for me. And so by going there, I developed a sense of what else was out there and got an idea of what life could be like if I wasn't working in corporate America. And by following my heart and actually saying yes to this very last-minute invitation to go, I basically transformed my entire life in that moment and uh, wow. wound up quitting my job soon afterwards. Yeah. What were some of the things that you saw at Burning Man that led you to know kind of what was out there? It was really the people. that The people that I met at Burning Man were all up to really interesting things, and they were all really deeply in love with their lives and themselves. And that was something that I had no context for. No one around me was in love with their life, and no one around me was in love with themselves. That is for sure (laughs) that I'm aware of, at least not at the time. The people that I was meeting, they were all up to the coolest things. You know, like there was a couple that was creating world peace for a living. There was a woman who was creating a company about promoting products that have to do with optimism. There was a man who I met who was, beginning a a, launching a business selling raw honey and so these people were all out there really following their heart and their passion and to be honest i actually think none of those businesses succeeded but all of those people are very happy in their lives like they went on to do other things that worked out for them there was something very special about that that you know just seeing people like that who were working on themselves and unapologetically being themselves and expressing themselves in the world it was very foreign You know, I like how you just mentioned how the businesses didn't even work out necessarily, but they were all happy. (laughs) Because I think that's such a great benchmark of just living your life. I know when I first started my internet stuff and I was going and I was visiting my family and they were all telling me about, you know, this internet stuff, like, are you just doing scams? Maybe you shouldn't be doing this and giving me all this kind of reasons why I shouldn't. I mean, they love me and they're doing their best, but 
I would just keep bringing it home to, like, at the end of the day, like, who's happier, you know? <laughs> who's happier? That's the benchmark to go after. So, I mean, that must have been just crazy going through, walking around this festival, having no context for people and living lives that they like, and then just coming into one after another after another. How did it happen that you ended up quitting your job? I mean, that must have been super scary. It was super scary. At Burning Man, the man that I met that had the honey business, one of the first things he said to me is, you should quit your job. That was his advice to me. It was like, hello, my name is, and you should quit your job. (laughs) And so it really planted a seed in my mind that this person that I had a lot of respect for was telling me to quit my job. And I thought about it, and I realized that for several years I'd known that what I was doing wasn't any longer my passion. It had been when I started in the sense that I was very excited to be in the music business at the beginning of that 10 years, but towards the end, I really wasn't anymore. And when I checked in with my heart, I realized how unhappy, how deeply unhappy I was returning to that office every day. What a disservice I was doing to the company by staying there at that point. So it took a while. I think it took a full year until I finally walked away it was a big process for me of really just trusting. It was, it was one of the first big trust falls I did into following my heart. What did the logistics of that look like? I mean, had you saved money or did you know where you were going? I had saved a lot of money because I was in a very good position with my work, making enough money to save. So in that way, I was definitely, I definitely had a leg up. I knew that I could survive for a couple of years without doing any work. However, I had no idea what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go. And so it was very frightening in that regard. And also the idea of knowing that once I left that industry and left that career path, that I wasn't able to come back. That at that point I would have established a reputation for myself as someone who walks off from a job for no reason. That they wouldn't have necessarily welcomed me back with open arms. So it was me letting go of the corporate world altogether. It wasn't simply me quitting a job. Wow. What did you tell yourself before you made that decision? Because it took a lot of courage, obviously. It took a lot of courage. There was a specific process that I went through. Like I was stuck one day and the next day I was clear. And the process had to do with getting really clear on what I thought might happen to me if I quit. And so I really went deep into those fears and the potential outcomes. And I think I even made a collage about it, you know, collaging visually the possible outcomes that might surface. And the next day I was clear. I just knew what I had to do. This particular process that I learned from a a landmark course that I was taking really made all the difference for me in that moment. So was it just like journaling out all your worst fears or was there, I I don't know if you're able to share the process with the landmark specific thing, but if there is anything you could share, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it was a specific process from the Landmark Wisdom course, which I was in at the time. It was part of my transformational personal development exploration explosion. I basically signed up for every course from every single school or coach or teacher that was available that I found out about and did them all at the same time. This was one of many things that I was doing. (laughs) Um, But this one, for some reason, just really landed for me. Yeah, They have a particular process in the Landmark Wisdom course where you can break free of something that is looping around in your head. So I can can share it to that extent. I would say that if if you're looping things around in your head a lot and you're stuck on those things, then this process is really, really helpful. Mm, And I know it's just really helpful any time to, if you're worried about something, just take some time to think about what the worst possible outcome will be because a lot of times, like if you don't take the time to just get clarity on that, it just feels so much worse than it actually is because we've never defined it. It's just nebulous and just even scarier. So that's awesome that you're able to do that. It's something that I've cultivated a lot more since then and developed a lot more since then. I would say that on a daily basis, I'm going very deep into my fears to get more comfortable with them. Interesting. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Well, one of the things that really changed for me or transformed for me over the years has been an understanding that Fear is actually a signpost that something positive is happening because without fear, we know that nothing is changing because change is inherently frightening to humans if it's at a true core level of change, right? Like if we're really genuinely transforming something, that means one thing is dying as another thing is being birthed. 
And so if we're not afraid, it means nothing is dying and nothing is being birthed. And so we're not moving forward. And so one thing I learned for myself was feel the fear and then take action. Feel the fear and then take action. At some point, I stopped recognizing the fear as a reason to stop. Okay, I'm afraid of quitting my job. Maybe I shouldn't do that was my previous way of thinking. And began to recognize it as something that was natural. Okay, I'm afraid that's because I'm doing something that's scary, and that's okay. And the only way I'm going to have any forward movement is by just doing that scary thing anyway. Mm, and so now you just do that on a consistent basis where you just feel the fear. And how is it working for you? I mean, have you had all positive results, or have there been things that you kind of have to take a step back and reassess it? Before I answer that question, I want to just point out that there's a second part of that process for myself. So not only do I look to see where there's fear, I don't just look to the fear and then do it without checking in with my internal guidance system. So that's another really big thing is I feel in deeply to my internal yes and my internal no. And then if it's a yes, you know, yes, do the thing that you're scared of, then I'll do it. If it's a no, don't do that, um, and there's fear, I won't necessarily do it at that point. If it's a genuine no that comes from the depths of my clarity. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about how you feel that internal yes or no? Absolutely. And I think this is a little bit different for everyone, but I recognize it as a correctness. For example, if I said to you, your name is Rachel, there's a certain recognition of truth that you feel inside of you, or at least what's true for you. And so somewhere in your body, when I say your name is Rachel, you feel a yes to that. Whereas if I was to say your name is bookcase, <laughs> you'd probably feel a little bit of a no in your body. Like, okay, my name is not actually bookcase. It's Rachel. And that's the kind of recognition that I use to find my own internal guidance in terms of, yes, I should do this, or no, I shouldn't. And so I imagine that's something then that you really have to hone in for a while, because I'm sure it's just a very whisper one way or the other, huh? Actually, I found for myself that it's actually really crystal clear. It's just what needs to be honed is your trust of your yes and your no. So, in fact, I find that most people know. They know exactly what they want deep down on their soul level. They can recognize that correctness. They just don't want to because the answers are terrifying because we'll get like, yes, I should leave this relationship or yes, I should quit this job or no, I shouldn't do this thing that seems very comfortable that pays a lot of money. (laughs) Those are the kinds of answers that we'll get. And so to be able to trust the outcome is what takes a lot of time to cultivate. And I find the only way to do that is by simply taking that leap, trusting your yes or your no, going for it, and then noticing the results. Mm, that's an awesome distinction. You quit your job. You didn't know what you were going to do next. You had a couple of years living in a of safe job, but still really no plan and spending a bunch of money on personal development. So how did you then get to that point from there to where you are now? And I know you can't give your entire couple of years story, but what were some of the highlights that got you to where you are now and just kind of the path that you took? Some of the highlights, I just kept following that yes and that no. And it took me on different journeys that had unexpected results. For example, at one point I went on an international trip that I didn't know very much about with people I didn't know. And I wound up meeting the people who introduced me to my entire community of friends in the Bay Area. And that also led me to move to the Bay Area where I met one of my most important Vedic astrology teachers. So then I was able to study with this particular teacher in the Bay Area. And that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been following my yes to this random trip that I took. And so basically, it's just been a series of unfoldment of following that yes and following that no and listening to it unwaveringly for many years. Wow, that definitely takes so much courage. So how was it for your friends and your family that were kind of not the people in the Bay Area, but the people who knew you before then? What were they thinking and saying to you? Amazingly enough, no one had anything to say that wasn't positive. It's hard to believe, of course, because I'm sure a lot of it seems very strange to a lot of people who maybe don't have a frame of reference for it. But I think that when we are really solid in ourselves, when we're following our yes with full confidence and full alignment, that the people around us tend to reflect that back to us. So I haven't received any kind of external invalidation because I think my internal validation has been so strong. That's an awesome point. 
So I'd love to touch on, because I know you help a lot of people figure out their life purpose. When you're helping them, have any of them reported to you that their friends or family aren't responding well to them? Only when they first come to see me. At the beginning when they come in, I haven't had anyone report any issues when they are in the process because the thing is they're taking action based on that really certain place in their body and their soul. They're completely aligned with what they're doing. And in fact, that's that's the essence of what I teach. Of course, there's a ton more that we do, but that's one of the core pieces of it. And so when they have that, nobody seems to push against them. Interesting. That's pretty awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about how you work with people to find their life purpose? Absolutely. I work with people one-on-one where they can come in for a Vedic astrology reading and we look at their whole life path. That's one way. But I also work with people in a six-week course that I have called Live Your Life Purpose Now where they come in and they actually start out not knowing their life purpose and not living it. And by the end of six weeks, they're living it and they're clear. So by the end of six weeks, then I guess people aren't like quitting their jobs necessarily, right? So is it something where, I guess, what exactly are the transformations after the six weeks? The transformation is that they're clear on what their purpose is and that they understand how to live it in every moment, regardless of what their job is. It may be that someone does eventually want to quit their job and get a new job or start a different career or start a business. But it's actually not necessary to do those things in order to be living your purpose in every moment. Now, that's awesome. Can you expound on that a little bit? Because I think that a lot of people think, you know, they need to take a leap of faith and quit their job. And maybe for some people that's their path. But for other people, that would put them in a really uh, not awesome situation. Absolutely. And it may not be aligned for them. For example, if I had quit my job before I did, I wouldn't have had the funds to do the exploration that I was able to do. And so I think it's really different for everyone. And the distinction that I really love to impart is that you actually are your purpose. You know, who you are at your core is your purpose. Your purpose has a lot more to do with your values and what you want to create in the world than it does what your job title is. So it's not so much about the labels as how you're expressing yourself moment to moment. So do you have any examples of anyone who went through your course who maybe was in a job that felt very different to them from their purpose, but then once they realized that it was kind of how they, the purpose was more about how they were expressing themselves versus the actual career, like how they were able to shift things and, and just be in the world? There is a woman who was doing several different things with her career. She had a cooking show and she had desire to perform as well, like to do a lot more comedic performances. And so she was wondering, do I need to scrap one thing and then focus on the other thing? How can I start to explore without necessarily doing a complete 180? And so what we had her do is to go out and create opportunities to be on stage and doing comedy whether or not she was actually generating income from them. So the important thing wasn't to create income from comedy. It was just to get out there and start doing it. Because once you get out there and start to taste the feeling of doing something, you can get a better idea of whether, A, it's exactly what you want to do, if it's in fact the most aligned expression of your purpose. And then after that, once you're sure, once you've had some experience with it, you can start to investigate how it can become a source of income. So in her case, She's currently in the exploratory phase. She's been emceeing different shows, and she's starting to get out there more and get more of an experience for doing comedy, but she's still working on her other projects. There are always ways to explore what you think your purpose might be without betting the farm. I love that. That is such a great point, just still not shutting off any part of yourself, but still not just kind of taking the what is it, taking the rug out from under your feet. <laughs> That's cool. That's great. That makes a lot of sense. Is there something that you think that people uh, traditionally talk about with life purpose that you find to be like not stellar advice? Because I know one of the things I love about you is you have pretty strong opinions about things. And I usually agree with them straight. (laughs) Thank you. It's true. One of the things that's conventional wisdom for life purpose is to go and read a bunch of books about life purpose or strength finders or personality tests. To find it. And I always think this is so comical. And of course, I did this myself when I was looking for my life purpose and 
would get the most ridiculous answers, like you should be a priest or a bus driver or, you know, a house cleaner or something. Naturally, none of these things would ever really resonate with me. And of course, I actually think strength finders and personality typing can be incredibly useful tools to find out what you're good at. But they're not useful tools in finding out what you love to do, what your heart truly wants you to do. And so I think that that advice is off for people to go and take those tests in order to find their life purpose. I think it's barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. I've done so many different personality tests, and I know that like, I have a lot of empathy, but I never really knew <laughs> what to do with it. How does it feel for you now doing what you're doing compared to before? I guess what are the primary, mm-hmm. you could expand on that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. There's a real grounded joy in what I do now. My entire being is absolutely lit up when I'm in the process of either giving a reading or supporting someone in finding the life purpose or creating material for my life purpose course. There's just something in me that can't get enough of it. There's a voracious hunger for more. It's insatiable because it's already satisfied in a sense. It comes from a place of satisfaction and constantly wants more, constantly wants to expand. And it's a really unique feeling and a really unique experience that I think is completely only experienced when you are in fact doing something that is aligned with your purpose and living your purpose. And it's what I want for everyone. I want everyone to have this experience because it is a flavor of joy and happiness that is unparalleled. It's not manic. It's not like, oh, I'm jumping up and down, cheering, and I'm going to crash later on and come down from it. You know, it's like this real genuine joy that comes from the infinite wellspring of divinely sourced creative energy. Well, and so you have that feeling uh, that people talk about where you just wake up and you can't wait to get to work. Do you experience that? Absolutely. I wake up and I have to negotiate with myself to have breakfast and take a shower before I start working. You know, there's times where I just want to roll out of bed and run straight to my desk. Every night I have to kind of wrench myself away from my work as well. I really just want to keep doing it until I am exhausted. (laughs) My biggest challenge right now is is actively convincing myself to do other things that will allow me to rest. (laughs) Wow. That's amazing. That's really cool. I mean, I've kind of been experiencing that lately with writing. Like, I'm so excited to get to the computer and start writing. That's really fascinating. I mean, it's just pretty cool to hear about how fun that could be for somebody. I love it. What's the specific action step that you take on a regular basis to just continually enhance your life? I just keep following my yes. (laughs) That's it. I mean, it sounds so simple, and I know I'm being repetitive, but it's the thing. It's the ultimate thing that will change someone's life for the better ongoingly. It's just truly listening to your soul's guidance. And of course, our soul's guidance can lead us to places that are gnarly sometimes. I mean, it's not always leading us to a place of rainbows and kittens initially, but it ultimately lands at a place of fulfillment. It's just sometimes the path to get there can be a bit crooked. Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, I don't think that anyone would have imagined that you're a Vedic astrologer <laughs> where you started from. So for sure, it's definitely not linear. No, not linear at all. Now that you've come and you've just done so much awesome stuff for your life, you've changed your life for the better in so many ways, and you've, you've done so many things to improve yourself, I'm curious, like, what's something that you think that people don't typically share about improving yourself? Either it's not sexy or, like, you're talking about that rainbows and kittens kind of picture. <laughs> Just that it's it's terrifying. <laughs> kind of what I was thinking before to the fear that every step is scary. That it never stops being scary. I think there's an illusion that once we arrive at a certain place, things won't feel frightening anymore. But the truth is, to feel fulfilled, we're constantly going to be in a state of change and we're constantly going to be coming up against our edges and always against our edges of fear. And so it's the one instance in which I think no pain, no gain is actually true because I'd actually say no fear, no gain because you have to keep coaxing yourself and pushing yourself beyond the limits of your comfort. There's really no way to do this and be totally comfortable. And that's a myth. And most people don't share that. They don't share the part where before they launch their new program, they're like nauseous for five days or a complete hysterical mess, crying and doubting everything that they're doing. 
Yeah, that's a great point. And would you mind sharing something that was scary for you about putting your program together? Gosh, all of it. <laughs> What's in the part that wasn't scary? Every every word I write, I'm fearful of. You know, like what how what will people think? And did this sound right? And is it in my voice enough? And is it too polished or polished enough? Or is this really me? And will I regret saying this? And what if I change my mind? And there's so many things that come up when we're putting content out into the world. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I think anytime we go to express ourselves really authentically from our deep soul level, there's just a lot of surfacey, ego-driven doubts that come up. Absolutely. So what are the things that you tell yourself when you write something and you say, I don't know how this is going to be construed by people? I just check in, check in with my heart, ask myself, should I put this out there? And if it's a yes, I just do it anyway. And then I still feel scared. <laughs> I still wonder how people are going to receive it. And that's an ongoing journey in terms of being able to not care what people think. You know, I think anyone that says that they don't care what anyone thinks is probably not speaking the whole truth. I don't know if being human is that's really possible. Yeah, I mean, we're meant to be connecting to other people. So I think it's just the survival instinct to care what people think. Yeah, absolutely. To be part of the clan, to not be evicted from the tribe for being different or for being an outlier. Yeah. As you put yourself out there more and more, has it gotten easier for you to to say things? Or do you still, I guess, feel the same kind of fear that you just know how to manage it better? Probably the latter. I think that the closer something is to my heart, the more true it is, the scarier it is to express it. That makes sense. One of the questions I ask people is, uh, just to keep this real, like you were talking about, we don't ever really get to this place where everything is just perfect. We're always working through things. So is there something right now that you're currently working through in your life? And if so, like if it's maybe even something beyond what we were just talking about, how are you working through that? Yeah, absolutely. Right now I am working through challenges with my health. I've been feeling really fatigued and looking for a solution around that. It's been a bit of a mystery in terms of what's going on. It has to do with my stomach and I've been working with some healing coaches who are helping me look at what foods are perhaps irritating my stomach. It's really difficult sometimes to be in the unknown, especially around our health. You know, even I'm I'm super fatigued and weak and then, you know, I'll go to do my work and I forget what state my body is in and I'm so juiced up and excited and alive and I just want to keep working. But then, you know, what my body actually needs right now is a lot of sleep and a lot of rest. So it's been really interesting to balance that. And also, it's hard to admit that I'm struggling, especially in an area like my health. Yeah, yeah, I totally, I'm actually in the same spot as you. I know we were connecting on that a while back, but it is, it's really tough. Like, I know for me, I had this goal for this month. I wanted to write four books, and I had all these goals about getting X amount of podcasts at, and just a huge, huge goal list. And then, like, the body's tired of incongruence is really tough when you have all that excitement about getting things. Have you established any, like maybe rest system or anything that's helping you or is it still just, and I know you're you're talking to healing coaches and staff, have you been able to do anything else or is this all just exploration and what you've mentioned? It's still the exploration phase where I'm working on really identifying the source of the challenge. I have taken a few tests that I'm waiting for results on. So, you know, hopefully I'll be able to identify the specific issue and then find the specific solution. And in the meantime, I'm going to take some time to rest for the next few weeks before my next big launch. Oh, good for you. Have you ever done a food lab, by the way? I think people who are listening might be able to benefit from this too. So just like noting what you've eaten and how you feel before and after you eat the things that you eat. Absolutely. And that's been a really, really great one. There were some symptoms, but I was able to alleviate right away by just eliminating certain foods that I never in a million years thought I would have any problem with. Healthy foods like spinach or paprika or things turned out to be the ones that were causing the most trouble. It's definitely a good thing for people to do. Yeah, it's such a good practice. I was shocked, too, at some of the things that I wasn't able to eat. For anyone listening, basically just, I mean, the practice that I do, and if yours is different, please say so, but what I was just doing with a nutritionist was basically writing my hunger level um, down on a 1 to 10 before I ate, and then after I ate, how I was feeling before and after I ate. And it's just fascinating. Like, I would find that, for example, in the mornings, if I would just have granola with almond milk, 
And for the rest of the day, I would just want carbs, carbs, carbs. If I would have chicken sausage in the morning, I would get tired for the rest of the day. So for me, my best breakfast is like eggs with some fish, maybe some sweet potato, and then I'm golden. I have awesome energy for the rest of the day. But just keeping that food lab over and over and just looking and seeing what the patterns are, it's just so, so fascinating to me. Is that kind of roughly what you were doing? Similar. I don't know if I've actually sat down and looked at like tracks specifically from day to day how I feel overall. I was just looking for specific reactions. So I think that would be a really great way to expand my inquiry. I mean, I've been loving it. It's so cool after, once you have weeks of results, to go back and be able to see because sometimes food will impact you the next day. So to just check out the patterns for stuff is really cool. Great. I would love to know, and you've touched on this a little bit, but a lot of people listening right now, they might be inspired by you, but still scared to make changes in their own life. So what advice would you give them? I would say that it's good that you're scared. Just be scared and then act. Join the I'm Scared Club. It's actually really fun here and rewarding. (laughs) That's awesome. And what about someone right now who's listening and they're struggling and just feeling trapped by their circumstances? I would say that you know deep down in your heart what it is that you need to do. And the sooner you do it, the sooner you're going to feel free. So you can do it. Just do it. Just take a tiny step in that direction today if that's all you can do because a little tiny movement forward every day will get you out of struggle. I love that. Do you have an example step that somebody could take? It depends on what they're doing, but let's say they're feeling trapped because they're in a job that they don't like. They feel like they can't quit their job because they don't have enough money, and that's what they really want to do. I would say... Find a way to make an extra $20 this month or to save an extra $20 or something like that. Like find a tiny step in the direction of saving money because as you start to repattern your own experience of your capacity to affect change in your own life, you'll find that it gets easier and easier. Oh, that's an awesome one. That is really, really helpful. I think people, I hope the people listening write that one down. That's really good. This has been great. Thank you so much. I would love to know, where can people go to learn more about you? They can go to liveyourlifepurposenow.com. Great. Well, thank you so much. This has been really great. I think that people can get some really good, tangible things from this. I really like how you've been just you know, if you're scared, great. You're scared. That's awesome. <laughs> I think that's going to really surprise people. I like that. It's a good pattern and joke for people to be thinking about. Thank you again so much for your time.